Hello everyone, my name is Chris Glendening, Head of Marketing here at Hashtags. Alongside me, CEO Marcelo Sampaio. Marcelo, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. We're talking a little bit about global regulation and it's been a wild ride just the last six months. Uh, and you know, further the last two years, there's been a lot of developments in regulation globally. Talk to me a little bit about what you've seen from the developments of regulation within the crypto industry. Yeah, so it depends really country by country, region by region, uh, but it's definitely making progress. So I think Mika in Europe was almost like a statement that said, okay, uh, we're taking a close look at that. Like we want to come up with rules. Uh, we're still learning in the process, but here are the first set of rules that we think it makes sense. Uh, you have countries like Brazil uh, that really now has a, a, a more like a strong or a, cl a clarity on the regulation side. Uh, being super pro development of the market. Uh, you have the US, uh, uh, there uh, it's like the feeling is like, there's a, it's more political in some senses, but at the same time, the market has been uh, 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 reacting to this in a way that said, okay guys, this is serious, we should take this seriously. And uh, yeah, we have, uh, you know, like, we have progress that happened, but we have a long way to go still. Marcelo, we sit here at the Hashtags headquarters in Rio de Janeiro. You talk a lot about how starting in Brazil was really about being able to work with the regulators and their willingness to adopt crypto and really understand the ecosystem. We'll talk a little bit about the reasons why you felt like Brazil was the right place to start hashtags. Well, back in the day, really, th there was nothing. I mean, nobody really knew about crypto or ha had any profoundity on the topic. But Brazil had uh, what I called at that time, you know, like... Uh, some leaders with intellectual honesty. So they knew that they didn't know enough, but they were open to learn. And they said, okay, that seems to be a big deal. Instead of having like taking the position and say, no, this is, we should avoid. Let, let's try to understand and, and, and understand who in that market are the, the players really you know, like, of, of trying to, to, to make this right, you know, like, and, and, and let's learn from it. And, and if there is merit, you know, like we, we go in and try to, 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 to allow you know like that to develop and create a set of rules that are, are pro development so that happened in Brazil <clears throat> so at that time uh our fed or the cent brazilian central bank uh ha still has is the same <clears throat> president uh, roberto campos neto was really somebody that uh, uh, took the time and understood uh, uh, uh the potential you know like of crypto uh in terms of of not only bringing productivity to 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 the market as a whole but really creating uh all sorts of features or, or novelty that were never possible before. So uh, Roberto like, was very welcome into crypto and, and, and really, you know, like, I think that probably is now one of the big advocates in, like, in how crypto can improve markets in general. Our SEC, it's called CVM, uh, also you know, like, uh, had a very similar approach. And, uh, and to, to begin with, you know, like, they allowed us to bring the first crypto ETF in the world from Brazil. Uh, now, you know, like our product, our flagship product is the second largest uh, uh, in terms of number of investors in the country. I mean, what shows like the demand that, that there is, like a real the repressed demand that there was at the time. Uh, really took the approach to say, okay, this, this, this is something good, it's not bad. We just need to create a set of rules, you know, like to, to organize this market and let it you know, like this thing to develop. So, so Brazil really, you know, like uh, interestingly enough, uh, is in the front seat, you know, like of this, I don't know, this phenomenon that crypto is. Uh, oh, looking forward to see, you know, like what's coming next. It's very interesting. Let's, uh, let's go from one type of regulator yeah. who's willing to work with crypto to another. And let's talk a little about the United States. Uh, a lot going on, obviously. Spot Bitcoin ETF filings. Uh, a lot of combativeness coming from the SEC in the United States. What's your sense of the U.S. market, what we're going to see in the short to medium term? And maybe let's tie it back to our previous question around Brazil. What are some of the things that the U.S. regulators can learn from the willingness by Brazilian regulators to actually adopt this asset class? So look, U.S. is the largest capital markets in the planet. And, and honestly, it's understandable that because of that, uh, uh, U.S. needs to be more careful on, on how, you know, like, uh, not only to regulate, but, the, you know, like, it goes about crypto, right? Because it's, it's, uh, whatever the U.S., uh, uh, the standard, 
it, it takes, it, it really, you know, like will, will, will say a lot to the world. So it's understandable. And with that said, I mean, U.S. historically is, is really the nation that embraces progress and technology uh, and, and teaches the world that. And this has been very different until now uh, for a number of reasons. But uh, I think the issue now is that uh, crypto uh, became too politicized. Uh, and this has been in the way and, and really should get out of the way uh, for, for, you know, like uh, policymakers and you know, like uh, regulators to really, you know, like dive in and understand like really what's what and, and what is the potential and, and pretty much create great rules for that to happen. Imagine if the U.S. had taken this approach for the internet, for instance, right? The world would be a very different place. Uh, we truly hope that you know, like things are gonna come together eventually, and not only the SEC, but the truly in like uh, uh, the Senate, you know, like the Congress, you know, like uh, all sorts of regula regulation agencies, like really, they 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 work together and in order to to make viable, you know, like uh, uh, crypto to to develop and, and to deliver this beautiful future that we all think is possible. You think by the end of this year, uh, 2023, we'll start to see some movement in that way? Yeah, uh, I think absolutely. So the crypto spot ETF, uh, again, nothing sure. Uh, we have really no idea what's going to happen from now on. But I think there is at least the sentiment that 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 things uh, once you get uh, clarity or, or, or you know, like so. The market wants that, and like the SEC, you know, like uh, at some extent wants that too, uh, but done in the right way. So, so I think you know, like we might come from a very conservative place to a more neutral place, in which said, okay, guys, and like how will you make this right, happen in the right way? And and the crypto spot, you know, like the Bitcoin spot ETF, is just a little first development, but it's going the right way because that likely will bring the <clears throat> the power dynamics of huge amount of capital, you know, like into this market. And this will absolutely have an, a positive impact, not only in price appreciation when it happens, but, but really around, you know, like uh, 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 um, the funding to develop a number of other blockchains and projects that will solve all sorts of problems. So it, it's, I think so. I think you asked, like, it, uh, we are, you know, like beyond the, wor the worst days in terms of crypto, I guess now. We're getting more into a place that, okay, uh, how do we make this happen as opposed to we're not going to make this sure. Yeah. No, fingers crossed. Yeah. Thanks so much, Marcelo. Thank you for having me.